Okay, for this passage, it's really key to break it down and understand what's going on. And sometimes people think, oh, we have to write down and, and all these words that are important, taking notes, etc. And that's actually not the case here, especially when you have these science passages. It's a much better idea to diagram stuff. Let me give you an example. Okay, here's the phytoplankton. What are they known for? Well, they're known for absorbing CO2, which is great. So if they're on the water here, they absorb the CO2. The CO2 doesn't go back into the atmosphere. So what happens? Something good, reduction in global warming. So this guy Martin comes along and says, well, we have some phytoplankton over here. They're doing their CO2 absorption. But look at the ocean over here. There's, there's no phytoplankton. So let's put some phytoplankton over here, and that way they will absorb the CO2. The CO2 won't go back up, and everything will be fine and dandy. The key, though, is how do you get the phytoplankton over here? Well, phytoplankton like an iron-rich diet. So we put iron over here. So iron, iron here out throughout the water, the surface of the water, so the phytoplankton can eat it, therefore absorbing CO2 and reducing global emissions. Now, what actually happens? Well, according to a study, here are the phytoplankton, more and more, but now who comes along? It's the predator. And actually, that's boring. Let's just draw a scary looking fish thing. There we go. There's the predator. Rawr. Comes along eats up the phytoplankton, and then what? Well, we'll kind of deal with the waste emissions here of the predator, but out comes the CO2 back into the environment. And so wait a second, Martin's wonderful plan backfired because the predators eat the phytoplankton and then sort of <clears throat> fart it back up into the atmosphere. So what I've done here is I've drawn this out. This is a complex passage, though it's relatively short, but now I have a sense of exactly what the passage is about. Obviously, your diagrams don't have to be quite as complex as this, and maybe you're even adept enough at visualizing this. But either way, it's a good idea to do this before diving into the questions. Now, though, we have the questions here. Starting with number five, it can be inferred from the passage that Martin's hypothesis includes which of the following elements. So this is a A, B, and or C. It could be one or all, or two of them. And so we're going to start with just A. A correct understanding of how phytoplankton photosynthesize, photosynthesis use a light, utilizes carbon dioxide. So where in the passage does he actually talk about that? Well, he says they utilize it because it helps them grow and release carbon matter, organic matter. So that's one instance where A holds true. And of course, that here is mentioned in line number eight and nine. Now we go to answer choice B. A correct prediction about how the addition of iron to iron poor waters would affect phytoplankton growth. Well, that goes back to our di diagram here. What happens? Well, it affects growth. More phytoplankton grow, but then the predators come along. So he does address that. Then we have C, an incorrect prediction about how phytoplankton growth would affect the concentration. Again, back to our diagram. He said if we have more phytoplankton here, they will absorb more CO2, therefore, a reduction in global warming. However, he discounted these predators here. So his prediction was incorrect. And just like that, we have all three answers for question number five. Now, question number six is very similar. It says it can be inferred that the author of the passage mentions predators line 10 primarily in order to do what? So we can answer that question ourselves. Well, to discount Martin's hypothesis to show that it's wrong because Martin didn't account for the predators. Therefore, answer choice A help explain why Martin's hypothesis is incorrect.